Well, good morning. We're going to be testing a few different routes here in downtown Eau Claire. Uh, this will be full self-driving 10.69.2. And the purpose of this drive is to retest some of the issues that I've had in previous drives that you've seen on these videos if you've watched this channel. All right, so we're at a stop sign and uh, I see a clearing here to the left. The car does make a right turn just fine. I'm gonna make another right turn at this green light. And everything is very smooth. I thought the turn there went well. Car is having a little bit of difficulty finding the center of the lane, but I did land there eventually. And we're going through some curves here as we go by Mayo Hospital here in Eau Claire. I do have a pedestrian up there, but I do have a car in front of me that's slowing down for the pedestrian, so we'll slow down because that car slowed down. Uh, but I do see on the screen the pedestrian is being depicted right there. And this will be a right turn eventually coming up to uh, the road into Carson Park. Uh, the reason I chose this route was because of this hairpin turn. On a previous drive video, uh, my car made it to the turn and then instead of making the turn, attempted to go back onto the road and continue straight on the path. So we're going to see how it does here coming up in just a minute. Getting into the right lane for the turn onto this next road. And here we are in a city street. We've got a bike lane and parked cars. Uh, those are all very well depicted here on the map. And you can see other objects on the map too, like mailboxes or uh, traffic, or sorry, garbage containers that are uh, waiting for pickup here on the side. So those are all features that Tesla's built into the visualization here in uh, this software. It's been in previous updates as well, uh, but they continue to add more and more with each software update, which I think is pretty cool. Did not see that 20 mile an hour stop sign show up, or uh, speed limit sign show up on the, uh, on the display, so I missed that. And we're coming into Carson Park. This will be uh, the hairpin turn coming up here. So we can see just in a few hundred feet. Car is doing a very good job maintaining the center of the lane and uh, maintaining the speed that I set. So here's the turn. And that was successful. That's awesome that it did that did at that time. The beeping that you heard was just that I did not have my hand on the wheel at the time, and it was looking for confirmation that I was with the vehicle. Of course, I'm looking ahead and paying attention uh, during this drive, so no issues as far as being inattentive. But that's one of the things that full self-driving requires is a little bit of resistance on the wheel as it's turning, just to know that uh, you are there and paying attention. And so this is our first waypoint, the logging museum here in Eau Claire. We'll get ourselves reset for the next leg of the route. All right, so we're in a parking lot. I want to just see how well it navigates through this and it seems to be picking a line pretty nicely to get to the exit point of the parking lot. Although it is a little jerky uh, through it, it does find its way to the road. Our next stop is going to be Banbury Place in Eau Claire. This will be a route that will take us through a little bit of downtown Eau Claire. Uh, here in early morning traffic, so we will see a few cars and pedestrians that we'll have to work through as well as stoplights and stop sign intersections. We are coming back up to the hairpin turn and this will be the opposite direction, so we'll be making a left turn.
car comes up to the intersection. Uh, nice stop. Creeping ahead, it does have the hold limit right here for the creep. Looking for traffic. I do not see anything coming up from the left. And it was clear to go. So since it is showing a 25 mile an hour speed limit here, I'm going to see if it picks up the sign. Nope, it missed that 20 mile an hour sign as well. I'm going to dial it back a little closer to the speed limit. All right, not much happening here on this little section, but we do have a nice curve, curvy road to drive through, and we're coming up into our city street portion of the drive. We do have a car that's encroaching the lane, and our car maneuvered to the left of that very nicely. It did just touch the yellow center line to do that, and I've noticed that uh, this version and the previous version of full self-driving will move over for, for cars that are um, on the side of the road uh, to give us spacing and clearance. So that was very well done. So far, no complaints or issues about this drive. Got a light that just changed green. We're going to proceed straight through this intersection. And I'll switch over to full visualization here so that you can see all of the uh, traffic and cars, uh, lane markings, everything that's around us in full view. So you'll notice that even though I have the set speed at 32 miles an hour right here, uh, we are going 31 because the car is following the vehicle in front of us and maintaining a set distance from it. So I have set it at six car lengths. I'm going to increase that to four, three car lengths. Uh, since I feel like that's realistically more where we want to be as we're driving through this uh, at this speed. And we did see the visualization of the pedestrian that is to our left. And coming up here, we'll be making a left-hand turn. There will be a little bit of construction in our way, so it'll be interesting to see how the car behaves around uh, some of these obstacles here on the road. And you should be able to see the cones, the construction cones, uh, very nicely depicted right up here on the, uh, on the screen, and there they are. So left turn lane is closed, but we do have another left turn lane here. Stopping for the red light. We've got a green light to proceed. The car will wait for the vehicle in front of us to begin moving and then it begins its move. A little bit of hesitation here and I think that's because it's working its way around the cones. So I'm, at, I'm pressing, I'm nudging the accelerator just a little bit through that and it totally missed the turn. So I do see that it did project our route or re, re uh, configured the route to make the left hand turn right here. So I've got a stop sign. Uh, this is a three way stop intersection. We do have another vehicle, it's waiting for that, and then it makes its turn. So, good recovery on the navigating part of full self driving beta to continue on the route, but I was disappointed that it did not make that turn. I think that's partly in due to some confusion with the traffic cones. So, I have an unprotected left. Or, I'm sorry, unprotected intersection coming with the cross traffic. The car is creeping ahead to see if there is any traffic. Nothing there, and then it makes the intersection. So a little bit cautious in that intersection. I felt like it could have committed and gone to that a little faster. We're slowing down here because we've got a vehicle parking to our right. And I think our car is just making sure that that wasn't going to be a traffic hazard. We're at another two-way stop. Cross traffic does not have stop indication. We're going to be proceeding straight through this intersection. And again, it creeps forward to make sure that we don't have any traffic hazard. In the traffic this morning, which is pretty light, uh, I don't see any issue with that. If we had heavier traffic, I would want it to go sooner. Uh, and I will try to retest that, I think, in a future video when we've got additional traffic just to see how it behaves in terms of pacing and, and spacing between uh, between cars as we come up to those types of intersections. Got some birds here on the road. 
and a bus on the right. That car went through all of that just fine. So here again, two-way stop. Car comes to a stop, it's got the hold limit line where it will creep forward to check for traffic. I don't see anything coming from the left. And a nice turn with that intersection. So this is our next destination, Banbury Place, here on the left side. And we will get ourselves reconfigured for the final leg of the route. So just taking over here because our full self-driving software does not have the ability to bring us into the parking lot. Uh, it just reaches an address des destination and then it would stop on the road right there uh, because it would think that we've arrived at our destination. So the third leg of our route will be from Banbury Place to the University of Wisconsin here in Eau Claire. I'll enable full self-driving right here as soon as it's available. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so with full self-driving enabled, we do have a clear turn. No traffic coming in from the left or right on that. And this route will take us back through downtown Eau Claire to the University of Wisconsin through some traffic uh, and some construction areas as well as a few stop sign intersections and stoplights. A little bit of difficulty with finding the correct lane uh, but we do want to be in the left turn lane right here and the car does make it eventually. We have a left yellow turn signal and then it just changed green. It's going to be interesting because I can't see that vehicle so I did take over right there. I do feel like the vehicle would have committed to that turn and pulled out in front of the, the van. So uh, It may have stopped if it saw it but I didn't want the van to think that we were uh, turning out of turn and uh, creating a traffic situation so I did take over at that point. So the route is going to continue straight through here. We should not have any uh, lane changes until we get closer to our turn. We're going to make a right turn eventually, but it will be after uh, a few intersections that we, we go through. Here's that construction zone that I was telling you about. And I thought there's a little bit of confusion with the turn signal of what the car intended to do. However, uh, it did make that uh, transition very well. Now we're, we're not transitioning right there very well. And so I did have to take over to continue straight on our own. I'm glad that police officer didn't think I was uh, reckless driving with the turn signal on and then stopping that turn. So just to re, uh, revisit our route here on the screen, it is pretty much a straight shot, but there was a lot of construction that the vehicle had to work through. We will be making a right-hand turn coming up here in a block or two. All right, the car should be getting into the right turn lane signals and makes the transition right here so that was fine in a heavier traffic situation that might have been a problem if it waited that long uh, to get into the right turn lane i have experienced in previous drives where it does wait too long and then it's unable to make the turn because it's blocked by traffic so we stopped there at the red light had the light change and we did make the turn just fine everything uh, in that segment 
after the construction went very well. Got a turn signal here for a turn for a curve in the road, which is not actually uh, a turn or an intersection. We're going to make a transition into the right lane, and then in two more blocks, we'll be making a right turn into the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire. I want to let it go here just to see, but I'm paying very very close attention. I just want to see how it. Um, navigates around this bike traffic. It looks like we're just slowing down for it, so that's good. I mean, speed limit here is 30 miles an hour. Uh, it's not trying to pass the biker. It's maintaining a uh, distance behind it, just like it would behind uh, a vehicle that, that would be in the road at the same position. And successful right-hand turn. And we are at our destination. So thoughts that I had on that drive, I actually was pretty happy with how the drive went overall. I did see some resolution of issues like the hairpin turn issue that I'd experienced in the past. Uh, however, there was a lot of difficulty in terms of route following particularly around the construction zones uh, that we went through here in downtown Eau Claire. So I do think some additional testing and improvements will need to be made in that area. I do plan to redrive that just to see how well it does and to report any issues uh, back to Tesla using the reporting feature on the screen. So that's all I have for this video and I want to thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.